In this video, we're going to apply a little bit of our you know, knowledge of our velocity and acceleration and displacement in two dimensions and uh, try to do a couple of examples as well. So let's say I have an object who's really moving at this location here along this black line here. And that's the path versus time. Well, what displacement have they gone through? Uh, maybe in a large time would be from from this point all the way to here. Then how far are we from our origin at this uh, delta t here? Well, that'll be a vector pointing from origin you know, out to where we are located right now. What if I take a smaller time interval? Then I would be from uh, point p all the way to there. Now what about an even smaller interval from there to there? So what we do is uh, we take one more time to limit as delta t approaches zero of our change in displacement. Okay. Eventually, we're going to get a point here that we can draw a line tangent. Okay, I'll just do a little small dashed line here. We'll draw a line tangent, okay, to point P, and that'll represent, okay, the, the change in R at, at that very, very instant. And, of course, if you would do a, you know, that versus time, you get an instantaneous velocity. And one more time, we find that it is tangent to our displacement graph, okay? So it kind of works that way, but we have to remember this is an actual path that it's going. So our velocity vector would be tangent to the direction that the ball is actually going, or the object is actually going, you know, which you know, kind of does make sense. Okay, just like we would do if it was a displacement time graph, so this is an actual path of the ball or the object. So we see that the limit theory also works just like it does in the AP Physics one. Now displacement really does not depend on the path, so the average displacement does not depend on the path that it's going. Okay, but remember distance does, so if this thing went up and then down again and back up to here, we would still take the displacement from our ending point to our beginning point. But if we do indeed dip down and go back up again, then we have to calculate the actual distance it goes if we're doing distance. That gets a lot more challenging because now we're along a curved path and getting those distances are a little bit more challenging to do. But you get the idea. You know, distance is still the actual amount of distance we go through while, while displacement is just where we're located from the origin. So all of those things still apply even though we're in two dimensions. Okay, so, but what about the average here? So the average does equal, I'm going to multiply 1 over dt, okay, multiplied by delta, okay, let's use uh, delta r for that. So this shows it a different way. We already stated that it would be tangent to it, but remember, time is not a vector, and delta r is a vector, so this is delta r, this is delta r, this is delta r. When we approach that limiting condition there, we said it is tangent to it, right? But let's take a look. If delta r is a vector, then delta r is pointing in that direction already. So if we multiply this by 1 over delta t, then the velocity has to be parallel, okay, to the actual vector that is delta r. So one more time we can see that uh, it would be true. So either way we want to look at it, we know that you know, if we have uh, delta r, okay, pointing in a direction here, uh, let's see if we go over here, and, uh, and we find that uh, delta r, okay, has a, let's just say it has an angle of 25 degrees, okay, then we know that velocity, okay, will also have a 25 degrees. Okay, we'll have a different magnitude, okay, but it still will be in the same direction as it. Okay, let's uh, take a look at at least one example, okay, in this video here and, and see what we can figure out. I always find the solid examples to help us make better sense out of what's going on here. So let's see, example one. Sally has a displacement equation of 5 minus 5t uh, times that unit vector i. So that means that's the path along the x direction and plus 5.5t multiplied by unit vector j. That's in the y direction. And she's chasing Kelvin, who has a displacement equation of t minus 1i plus 11 minus t squared j. First question is, will Sally uh, catch Kelvin? 
Okay, and uh, is if Sally does catch Calvin, what's the angle between their velocity vectors, okay, when they actually do collide with each other? Okay, well, those are good questions. Well, we know that if Sally does catch up with Calvin, that the displacements must equal each other and must also equal each other at the proper time. So let's go ahead and solve for time. Okay, and I'll, I'll label this in the I direction right now. Put a little vector head on that. Okay, you'll find out that if I do a vector head like that, that does mean it's a unit vector. Okay, so I'm going to set 5 minus 5t equal to t minus 1. So what I've done is I've taken the x direction of Sally and set it equal to uh, Kelvin. And then we're going to get a time for this equal to 1 second. So when their x direction uh, coordinates cuts up to each other, okay, it's going to be one second. Let's do likewise in the j. So vector hat like that. Okay, it looks like we have 5 plus 5 t. Okay, and that's going to equal 11 minus t squared. Now we do end up with a quadratic function. I did uh, use my solver to get this, and I got t equal to one second again. So because their x and y coordinates catch up with each other, you know, at the exact same time, uh, we can assume that uh, Sally indeed does catch up with uh, Kelvin. Okay, so there's our, our first way of solving it. And that's you know pretty much just like what we would do okay, if it was a straight line question and they were traveling in one direction. Do they catch up to each other, yes or no? Okay, so what we need to do now is get their velocities Okay, and uh, also see what angle there is between them. So let's write expressions, okay, uh, for the velocity. Okay, well, let's do uh, Kelvin first. Okay, so the velocity of Kelvin then, okay, is going to be the, the derivative of this equation here. So we write it like this. It's going to be d over dt. And then I'll put a bracket like this. And I'm going to go t minus 1 multiplied by i plus 11 minus t squared. And that's multiplied by j. Now we're going to do this just like we would do any derivative, except there's going to be two of them. There's going to be one in the x direction, and there's going to be one in the y direction. The ending result of this, well, the derivative of t and negative 1 is just going to be 1i. So it's just going to be i with a vector hat notation on it. Okay. And then we're going to take uh, the 11 will become 0. Uh, 2 times a negative 1 is going to then be a, a negative 2. And then, of course, we lower the exponent by 1. So negative uh, 2t, and that's going to be multiplied by j. So that's the derivative of Kelvin's velocity. Let's do uh, Sally's. So the velocity of Sally is going to be the derivative with respect to time. And I'll put a bracket around this one here. Okay, and that's going to be 5 minus 5t. And that's multiplied by i. Okay, plus 5 plus 5t. And that, of course, is multiplied by j. And let me put my little vector head on that. Okay, and I uh, forgot my vector head there. Okay, what is that going to equal then? Well, it looks to me like that's going to be two constants there. So I'll have a, a negative 5 uh, multiplied by i vector head. Okay, plus a 5 uh, multiplied by j. And that's how we get the velocity equations. In the next video, we'll uh, finish up with this problem and have another example problem.